welcome back to the Traders Network. I'm Michael Yorba, your host. Thanks for joining us. Broadcasting to you live from the Dallas KFXR 1190 AM iHeart Media Studios and worldwide through yorbamedia.com. All right, I'm joined with Dan Bates, uh, Chief Executive Officer, Windstream Technologies. Uh, Mr. Bates brings over 20 years' experience in the technology sector, but he's way ahead of the curve with his Windstream te- Technologies. Dan, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. All righty, let's see if we can turn Dan on and bring him into the show. Let's see, one more time. Click, click, click. And Dan, are you there? Hello? Nope. All right. Here's what Dan does. I'm going to vamp here just a little bit and tell my board operator, who is frantically dialing the phone to get him on the show. Uh, We have got a company, Windstream Technologies, publicly traded WSTI. It's headquartered in uh, North Vermont, Indiana. And nope, we don't need to hear that over the line. As a matter of Brent, hello, Brent, let me wake you. That's not good to bring that out over the Hello, Brent. Could you go knock on that window and tell him that uh, he's really kind of blowing it? Um, we'll be right back. As there we go, he got that got that dial tone off the show. Yeah, um, you know, and I uh, special thanks to uh, uh, the president of Cumulus and Fox and NBC and ABC for listening. Well, um, we got a new intern in the uh, control room, and uh, poor guy's doing the best he can. You've all been there. Little beads of sweat are coming up on his lip. Um, we'll bring uh, we'll bring Dan Bates into the show here in just a second as soon as he gets him back on the phone. And uh, uh, Dan, are you there? Yes, I am. Wonderful, we got you connected. Yes, yeah, sorry about that little faux pas that we had, but I'm glad you made it to the show finally. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Glad to be here. All right. Now, um, you're uh, you're the CEO of Windstream Technologies, but before we get into what Windstream Technologies does. Please give us a little background on you, the, the leadership skills you bring to the table. Sure, sure. So I am called a serial entrepreneur. I started my career way back when in the recording studios of Los Angeles when I was bringing technology into the control room environment, making it, making it possible for feature films to be edited and scored electronically. That gave me my first taste of technology and what it could do for people and how it can assist in the creative process. Started a couple of companies after that, was bitten by the startup bug. One of the companies was uh, designed for adding interactive audio to 3D gaming. Then I did a bit of work in the uh, interactive video space, a lot of work in media and advertising because of those technologies. And Spent about 25 years successfully in the entertainment and, uh, as I say, media and advertising industries in Los Angeles. Great place to uh, great place to cut your teeth if you're going to be in that business. What what got okay. you to move from from the entertainment industry on the technology side and then into uh, what Windstream does? I mean, well, I like I like looking at how technologies can be applied to new situations. I did that in in uh, video. I did it in audio for gaming. And I started looking at the sustainability industry. I wanted to do something in clean tech. Back in 2007 and 2008, I lived at the beach in uh, Southern California. I noticed every day there was wind blowing the palm trees. And I thought, why aren't we able to harness this untapped energy resource in the urban setting? That led me down the path of just looking at the problem, looking at it a little bit differently, the way I had done in previous startups. And I came up with an idea that I started to have vetted by, by my friends, my colleagues, the smart guys in the group. And all of them said, you know, no one's ever looked at wind energy this way. Small scale, multiple turbines, basically putting together a little wind farm, a little wind farm on a user's home. And that led me to come up with the business model around wind stream. The idea behind it was to create something that was cost effective and a solution for the high cost of technologies that here before just really didn't make sense for the end user. If you don't have a realistic ROI, that's most that's a non starter for most people unless they are concerned about solely their carbon footprint. All right, That's now, what started it all. Let's get into it. Now, by the way, it, those listening online, uh, go ahead and go to the website, windstream-technologies.com. 
Inc. Inc.com, so you can see what we're talking about. Those of you that are driving, please keep driving. All right, tell us <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> tell us about Windstream Technologies. What is it that you're doing? And we'll get into you know the, the cost and, and the rest of the things I want to talk to you about anyway. But first, sure. let's, let's talk about the corporate bio. So, Windstream Technologies was set about to bring in a low cost solution for urban wind. Mm-hmm. It quickly morphed into something other than that. As I was going down the, the path, we were looking at the model of the U.S. DIY or do-it-yourself market. And it's a robust and you know, burgeoning market. But as I got into this and I started looking at the rest of the world as a play, we started thinking about places where energy is expensive. In the U.S., we pay $0.12 cents a kilowatt hour. We average 1,000 kilowatt hours a month. In other parts of the world, the Caribbean, for instance, it's very close to 50 cents a kilowatt, four times the average price of the U.S., and they use one-third of the energy. So why not start looking at markets that have a need and have a desire for low-cost energy? How about markets in the rest of the world, like India and Africa, Latin America, where they don't have access to power, to energy? Those are the places that we decided to take the product first, and created solutions for those environments, for those countries and regions and around the world that became the low-hanging fruit and launched our business into the success that we're currently having. All right. Now, does, does that mean that your market right now is domestic and going international, or are you already penetrating international markets? We are 90% international at this point. The focus that we have in the U.S. is around municipal installations and places where there is a mandate. And the largest one that we have in the U.S. is the U.S. government, right? The military. They have a net zero carbon footprint policy by 2030. That means they have a need to start using renewable energy resources, renewable energy technologies, to meet that mandate, and we're working with several National Guard bases across the country in trying to provide solutions for them, as well as municipalities where local governments are looking to reduce cost and display to their constituents the commitment the community has made to a sustainable future. Tell me about the innovative solutions for these energy challenge environments. I mean, what... All right. Yeah. Happy to, happy to. What we created first was a wind-only product. As we went around the world, we saw... People needed a solution that was more reliable than a wind-only resource. We added a solar panel. We then created the world's first integrated hybrid solution. We've got panels on top of wind turbines, all governed by our own proprietary electronics, so that the user has to do nothing more than decide, do I want to hook this up to batteries or do I want to go to an inverter? and connect it to my local grid. The energy is designed to be used on site. Where you generate it is where you use it. And it really is a choice of I've got a positive and a negative wire, and which am I going to hook it up to? And we provide all of those end-to-end solutions for the consumer. What's the name of that product? It's called the Solar Mill. Solar Mill comes in a variety of products and a variety of of power-generating capabilities from as little as one kilowatt up to two and a half and even more, in some cases, four and a half or six kilowatts of power on a standard solar mill model, utilizing multiple turbines and multiple panels. If you think about it, it's Legos. It's Legos for renewable energy. All you need to do is decide what kind of configuration you want, how much power you need, how much wind you have versus sun, and you can mix and match panels and turbines. They all plug together with just a click of a connector. So l- let me jump into that for, for now, all of us that don't really understand what the, what the conversion is on kilowatts versus a normal house usage. Say you have a 4,000-square-foot house. How many of these would it take to, uh, um, to power that house? Okay, so you're talking about a 4,000-square-foot house, and you're talking about one here in the U.S. The right. U.S. averages 1,000 kilowatt hours a month. So you'd need, first of all, to know where you're putting it. Are you putting it in Phoenix where there's a great sun? resource and some good wind in the afternoons and evenings, or you're putting it someplace where there's not such great sun and maybe a better wind resource at the beach, where typically, and where I live in Southern California, it's overcast often, but it's always windy. 
So you need to know where you're putting it. So the design of the product, though, is not to take the user for the typical U.S. user off-grid. We'd love to, but these are small-scale and supplemental in design for the U.S. market. So you would probably need three or maybe four of our model solar mill SM2 6Ps if you really wanted to get off-grid. Those are big systems. But if you take that same solar mill SM6P and you put it on a home in Jamaica where they spend 43 cents a kilowatt hour and they use 350 kilowatt hours a month on average, that one unit will do most of your draw. So it depends on where you place the units and what your resource, excuse me, what's your, what's your draw, how much electricity do you use. Those are all critical decisions. In India, for instance, our SM1 2P will take, it's, which is one kilowatt, will take most of the smaller Indian homes off-grid, providing 100% of their power. Dan, let's take a break now and drill down into your company and some of your products on the other side. Would love to, love to. Don't forget to check us out on the web at www.windstream-inc.com. Okay, got it. We'll be right back with Dan Bates, Chief Executive Officer, Windstream Technologies, and the symbol on that company is WSTI. We'll be right back. Hey Dallas, where do you go to hear the edgiest uncensored talk and cutting edge local music? DeepElumOnAir.com. Whether you're looking for a good laugh, honest sports commentary, or DFW's best bands, DeepElumOnAir.com has got you covered. Deep Elum On Air is located in the heart of Deep Elum, where you can find the best local music, local businesses, and local people. This ain't your grandpa's radio. Heck, it ain't even radio. It's Deep Elum On Air. Check them out at DeepLMOnAir.com today. Call Big D Cats Catamarans for fun corporate events and private parties. Come celebrate with your special clients and build your team. Bring up to 85 of your clients and friends for dinner and dancing on the yacht just minutes away from your office at Pier 121 Marina on Lake Louisville. Come sailing, golfing, target shooting for a fun yet elegant evening and cruise. You have to see this beautiful 70-foot catamaran. Check out the website at BigDCats.com. And to book your event today, call 214-705-3772. If you want to work until you drop, reduce your standard of living in retirement or lose more of your hard-earned money in the stock market, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to generate a steady, predictable income, I'm talking real wealth and financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. A free report is now available that reveals the money-making secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. It reveals how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and wealth-building power without risking your money in the Wall Street casino. To get your free special report, visit bankonyourself.com. That's bankonyourself.com. My name is Jepal. Two years ago, I received a kidney transplant. When I was 21 years old, I started dialysis. And for seven and a half years, I was a patient receiving treatments three times a week for four hours each session. And man, it was hard. When I was sick, I barely had enough strength to walk across the parking lot going to the movies with my brothers. But after my transplant, my strength and energy came back and I was able to run around and play with my nieces and nephews, which is very important to me. Being outside and feeling that first sun on your face is just incredible. You, you just feel the energy and the strength back in your body. It's something that's just so unexplainable, but something that you appreciate to the fullest. Kidney disease affects so many people in the African American community. My kidney transplant gave me my life back. And by becoming a donor, you can help someone get their life back as well. You have the power to donate life. Be an organ, tissue, and eye donor. To find out how, go today to DonateLifeTexas.org. Sponsored by the Texas Department of State Health Services. Have a car you're thinking of trading in or selling on your own? Would you rather not deal with all the hassle? Take the easy route and help a kid at the same time by donating it to Dallas Can. Your car will be picked up for free within just one day. You'll get a great tax write-off and you'll feel good about yourself for doing something good for at-risk kids who need a second chance. Call today at 972-274-5437. That's 972-274-KIDS. Or you can donate online at texanscan.org. Call today and remember to write off the car, not the kid.
Welcome back to the Traders Network. I'm Michael Yorby, your host. Thanks for joining us, broadcasting to you live from the Dallas KFXR 1190 AM iHeart Media Studios, broadcasting worldwide through yorbamedia.com. All right, I'm joined with Dan Bates, Chief Executive Officer, Windstream Technologies, Windstream Dash Inc. Inc.com, symbol WSTI. All right, Dan, if, if we can, I wanted to get into your management skills here, building a company that can, you know, that can have lasting global impact. You certainly got it. Let's talk about uh, um, what you're what you're doing on the inside of it for the investors that are listening. Sure. So I believe we've got to build this business on good, solid fundamentals. We've got to start making products, shipping products from where our our current factory is, our manufacturing facility is 50,000 square feet in a small town about 50 miles below Indianapolis called North Vernon. I employ about 50 people, 45, 50 people right now and growing all the time. And I, like I said, we're shipping products every day all over the world, shipping to over 30 com- uh, countries. We build products that have make a difference in people's lives, that have a, have a, a reasonable ROI, that have a cost effectiveness that, that really improve the quality of life for people. Those attributes to the product will allow us to build strong fundamentals for the business, driving revenue, which will then be reflected in the share price for our investors, our employees, you know, management. Everybody is going to, to have a win in this business going forward. Let's talk about some of the 20, uh, 2014 milestones that you've had and uh, where, you, where you're going to take the company in the future. Sure. Right now, our biggest customer is a, our distribution partner for not just Jamaica, but throughout the Caribbean, and that is the multi-billion dollar JPS, Jamaica Public Service Corporation, the um, or service company, excuse me, which is Jamaica's national utility. They vetted our technology over the course of several months, many months, and com- we competed head-to-head with other technologies. They chose our solution for the fact that we can provide stable, consistent energy throughout the year with these products. We currently have over $22 million in purchase orders with JPS that we are delivering against right now. Containers leave our factory every day. Um, we then have moved into other areas. 20, uh, 2014 saw us announce a distribution relationship with a company, a well-heeled renewable energy company in Japan called Tosmo. They are high-efficiency, energy-efficient lighting, and uh, they wanted to get into the generation business, they chose our products. And I'm very proud to announce that just as recently as the day before yesterday, we closed a deal with a very, very significant player in India and have created a joint venture, Windstream India, to manufacture our products in a country of greater than 1.1 billion people where 400 million of them live off the grid. So it's an exciting time for the company. We've got more sales orders than, than, we, than we really can build right now. We're now at the, at the uh, a phase of scaling up, scaling up our production processes to meet the demand and meet the orders that we have in hand. You know, it's only a hop, skip, and a jump to China. Right after that, I mean, once once India gets uh, gets going, uh, is that your next move to move into China? Uh, if you can tell me, I mean, don't you say, know. Don't we have been approached by many companies in China to bring our products over there. We haven't done so yet. I am all about focus right now. We have to focus on the deals that we have in hand. Right. I'm doing big numbers throughout India. I'm in the process of building a manufacturing facility to shore up the need for product that we have in India and throughout South Asia, the Philippines, um, Indonesia, Vietnam, all where we have customers. And I have to think about China very carefully. Before we get there, we want to walk before we run, and I want to make sure that those markets where we're already establishing a beachhead are are able to be left to their own devices or, or managed appropriately so that we can expand into such a huge Chinese market. You know, one of your hallmarks, uh, and people don't really know this, is is a big thing with you is conducting business in a, a, an honest and respectful manner. I know that that's, that's, that's one of the big things with you. 
we we rarely talk about that aspect of the, of the leadership on on the team of of the companies that come onto the show. Bring that out for us a little bit. Sure, um, you know it's it's just the way I was raised, and I think that it's much better to be honest, <coughs> excuse me, and transparent with our partners, and just. Tell them how it is. Tell them the truth. Tell them the truth not only about the product, but how we intend to do business, how we hope to do business. And as I often say, I'm only going to give you the truth. You may not like it, but it will be the truth. And that's the way I operate. That's the way I deal with my partners, my strategic partners, and my employees. In fact, we just had a little bit of a holiday party today where we were able to wish everybody well. I'm heading to India tomorrow for two weeks, and I won't be seeing them for the, for the holidays. But uh, they wanted to know what their positions were going to be now that they, uh, they saw that we are opening a facility in India. And I assured each and every one of them that we made a commitment, and, uh, and I intend to honor that commitment to the city of North Vernon that helped us get started. I've employed many, many people throughout the North Vernon area in Indiana, and I wanted to assure them that their jobs are secure and, in fact, we are book solid with every unit that we can make through 2015 and well into 2016. What about uh, physical events that you may be at here stateside? Is there anything coming up? Where can I mean, obviously they can go to your website, Windstream Inc. or windstream com and, and see the product. But what, you know, what if somebody really wants to trade shows, anything of that nature, where they want to come, touch, feel, shake hands, things like that? You know, I I certainly be happy to talk to folks who are interested in the product. Um, we have not sought out a distribution entity to help us. We're a technology company. We build technology. We have patented all of our, all of our products. All of the, uh, the, the uh, underlying technology is owned by the company and, and filed uniquely throughout the world. And as such, until I am ready to distribute the product through a good, solid strategic partner here in the United States, this hasn't been a market I've been interested in, that I've been able to focus on. So... It's disappointing. I get emails all the time from folks. Why can't I buy one? I generally answer those personally and say, be patient. We hope that by the third or fourth quarter of next year, we'll be able to penetrate the U.S. market and make these products available. But I'm a small company. I understand my limitations. I can't be servicing single unit or a few unit installations as a manufacturer and a technology company. I need to focus on scale. Yep, yeah, that's a that's a very good answer. All right, um, the last messages you want to take away for the, some of the investors or, or that are listening to to uh, to you and me talk. Last message, a takeaway message for uh, for our audience before we part. Sure, I think that if you understand the global need for energy, if you understand that there are people all over the world that want what we have, that need for power is just going to increase exponentially as time goes by. I heard recently that the Philippines are faced with a 600 megawatt shortfall this summer because the way their population is desiring the things that we take for granted. They can't build that much capacity. They're talking to us now about providing products, but that's the same all over the world. So as an investor, I think I'd look at this company as somebody who has a unique solution at a very, very cost-effective price point that's doing business all over the world and is primed to really start moving here in the next quarter, the next year, and beyond. Dan, well said. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. Really appreciate the time. My pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. And if you want to go learn more about us, we have some great videos online at www.windstream-inc.com. Great. Talk to you soon, Dan. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Dan Bates, Chief Executive Officer, Windstream Technologies, windstream-inc.com. And don't forget the symbol WSTI. I want to thank everybody who's uh, uh, supported us over the last couple of years on our show. Thank you. Good luck. Good trading. We'll talk to you soon.
Thanks for listening to today's program. The Traders Network is a production of Yorba.tv LLC and is streamed live and archived at yorbamedia.com. We invite you to listen live, join in the conversation real time, and link to the Traders Network on the Yorba Media website. All opinions in this show are that of the presenters or their guests, and not of this station's owners or management. These opinions are for educational purposes only and should not be interpreted as investment or financial advice. All investments involve risk, and past performance is not indicative of future results. Tune into the Traders Network every Monday through Friday afternoon here on 1190 AM.